Okay, hold on a sec. So, we've got a uh, power generation problem. And right now, I think this dish is solely responsible for our communications. So I'm going to retract, and if things go horribly wrong, then things go horribly wrong. I've got to retract this antenna and save its charge. Deactivate. And I guess I have to turn off some lights. There we go. Okay, well, we can still see the probe, so no problem there. We'll only turn the lights on if I absolutely need to. That should leave us in a stable energy situation. Continuing. Okay, so to the maneuver node. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so why are we... Are we rolled in properly here? Where's the sun? There. Okay. Yeah, I think we could use a bit of a roll here. Uh, note to self, shouldn't uh, align these panels the same as these panels. Should have had the, the corner of the panels coming right at where these would be flat. That way two of these panels would face the sun at the same time as these. Oh, live and learn. It's not working out very well. Yeah, we can deactivate this one too. Okay, so we can deal with uh, point two four if we could get that. Not getting too much better than that. Okay, uh, let me do some experiments while we're here. Ooh, uh, Mr. Goo observation while in space high over the sun. Looks like uh, recovery and transmit are about the same, so let's just transmit the data and no comm devices cannot transmit data. Uh-oh. Hmm. This is strange. We can control it, but we can't talk? What the heck is going on here? Okay, well, uh, it's possible that what's happening is yeah, uh, our only way to talk to Earth is on the opposite side of Earth, so... But that doesn't explain why I was able to control the vessel at all. Okay. That looks like a connection. Are we all convinced about that? Observe Mystery Goo. Uh, transmit data. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, now we can do that. So at the very least, we'll get this much data from it. 143 science added. Uh, in retrospect, putting the stuff here might not have been such a good idea. We don't need far. Okay, uh, can we do some other experiments? How about gravioli? Yes, we can. Wow. Uh, high over the sun, 242. Yeah, well, while well, we can transmit stuff, we should transmit stuff. So, it's possible that, like some of the other interplanetary missions, we are not going to be successful this time, depending on how our electric charge holds out. Still got 225 days left, according to this one.
Okay, 242 science added. Let's try the thermometer. Nope, can't be done. Okay, and I don't see anything else I can turn off. Well, this is 0.2 charge. I guess the probe core itself uses 0.04. Doesn't really say. Could something else be using charge? Well, let's take this a little bit farther you know, on its journey and then see what happens. We appear to be replenishing electric charge here. Okay, now it says we're only one day away from completely losing charge. So this actually has... Uh, I've got an emergency panel here and uh, it's got solar exposure, funnily enough. This one over here doesn't. Well, so much for using these AIES solar panels. Their inability to track the sun is putting me at a little bit of a disadvantage here. In the VAB, it didn't really do a proper simulation of anything. At this point, I'm going to ditch this stage, and uh, it did look—it does look like we uh, did have some boil off. So yeah, uh, we did lose the hydrogen and possibly some oxygen. And we actually wouldn't have had enough for uh, for the burn possibly if we waited another 50 odd days. So that's that's very good. I like that. That's good to know. And knowing that, let me just get rid of that. Uh, and uh, let's hopefully use our RCS ports to move forward a bit. Thank you. Hopefully our orbit has not changed too much because of that. Now, that does not help our energy situation at all. Yay. Does running this rocket recharge our batteries? Well, we would probably mess up our trajectory. But let's see if uh, we can do some sort of iterative process on that. So let's mess up our trajectory in different directions repeatedly and hope that that... Oh, wait, uh, one thing I haven't tried is turning off torque here. Does that make a big difference? No? <laughs> Not really. Turn off SAS doesn't. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to point retrograde. And activate the rocket. Nope, doesn't recharge us at all. Okay. Or maybe that was too short? No, it doesn't really have a electric charge indicator. So that was not a valid plan either. Okay, well let's see how far this goes before... let's just get on with it. And if it loses electric charge, it loses electric charge. I'm going to point at the node now. It didn't really seem to help to deviate from that anyway.
And we continue. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Yep, dire situation and all that. The energy, electricity generation out here is really much lower than I thought it would be. Uh, is Are we just not facing the sun? Well, we are a little bit off. Let me turn a little bit too. Uh, the other way, the other way. Okay, well, uh, looks like we have just barely enough uh, charge for the connection right now, so let's just do this. Uh, let's do the burn. We're going to be a little bit off because, of course, I did that tiny little burn as well and haven't adjusted for it yet. Uh, come on, uh, I, I want to get out of this plane. Okay... Right. Well, at least this is working. Now, when I lose electric charge, do, does the engine shut down? And for that matter, I still got the remote tech issue. Uh, does this mean that... Uh, it seems like I still have control even if I'm not in communication, which is wrong. And if somebody knows what's going up on with that, I know that my remote tech settings haven't changed from you know previous episodes. So is there something up with this part? Is it not configured for remote tech properly? I don't know. There's an old version of a realistic progression light. So that could be a thing. We've lost electric charge, but our engine is still running. So it's not affecting communication. Ah, the SS doesn't really throttle, does it? Okay, stop that. Yeah, I don't think it's throttleable. Okay, but we've corrected our inclination. Let me do another maneuver to not in a year, but in a shorter amount of time to correct this. Bring us in a little bit closer okay so we've got uh, 508 kilometers let's try this one Smart ASS does like to spin, doesn't it? Stop that. Oh, 
There we go. Very low periapsis around Duna. Looks good to me. But we're sort of running on magic here, <laughs> so uh, not exactly what I intended. And I will be looking forward to any comments about what happened here. But while we're on this mission, let's just get it over with. And we will gather the science. And what we will do is next time, this probe should have enough to get to Venus as well. So next time what I'm planning to do is trying to send it to Venus. So hopefully I'll be able to figure out what's been going on here before then. And we'll try and do that one properly. Okay, so let's get into the Mars Sphere of Influence. And I don't know what our electric charge situation will be. It doesn't really know what my electric charge situation will be either. Of course, if I don't have any electric charge, I can't send any data back. So even if I do get into doing experiments, it won't do, do me any good. So, okay, so here we are, Mars Sphere of Influence. Uh, we don't have a connection back. But that's not having the intended effect right now. Just preventing us from sending science back. So it's sort of having like the default KSP effect. You know, uh, the antennas being meant for sending science back. But it's not having the realism overhaul effect which is affecting control. So we're going to get into the atmosphere but not very deep. I just want to see what uh, Mars's sort of effect will be and so I want to get it about 50 kilometers. I think that will potentially allow this probe to survive and that's what I want to see. I want to see what the heat effects are after doing the Nova mission. I want to see what kind of heat effects 50 kilometers will give me and what kind of drag. Doesn't seem like much drag. Uh, 40 is almost tempting. Seems like it's either 55 or 42. I'll go with 42. That's because we're so far out. Seems like I can still control this thing, though there is no line back home. Even though it looks like we're we're on the same side as the the KSC and all. Seems like we would have a line back home if the antenna was working. Okay. Whenever I time warp it gives me a little bit of juice, but then when I stop time warping it doesn't. Empty. Well, while I can control it, let's investigate the possibility well, possibility that reorientation would help. I don't think so. I think we're flat to the sun. Uh, the sun exposure of this one is a little bit low. Uh, let me take smart ASS off of that. Let me monitor this. That's worse. Well, let's see what the max is around here. Okay. So basically it looks like we're generating about a little less than two-thirds what we would around Earth. I would probably as uh, you know to be conservative about it maybe go with one half. out of power. Hmm. Wish there was a way for me to deactivate. Well, you know, if we've got local control, I should be able to deactivate this dish, replenish electric charge, and then reactivate. Let's go with that theory. So apparently I don't need I don't need communication with mission control in order to control this probe anymore. 
and I don't know why but let's let's go with that let's say I deactivate I still have the ability to activate this yes I do okay uh, okay well this is an exploit folks and I don't know why Okay, well, I'm not going to get the science illegitimately like this. Uh, we did the science around around the sun. And and that was reasonably legit, even though we didn't have the signal delay. The signal delay didn't matter because we weren't doing any maneuvers at that point. We were already in the trajectory around the sun. We weren't doing any maneuvers, so the signal delay was irrelevant. We had sufficient electric charge to send the information back home, so that was all legit. I'm not going to get science when the situation isn't legit like this. So I'm going to try and figure out what went wrong, and if you guys could help that would be great. And then we'll come back to this. Um, why don't we see whether we can get this into orbit around Duna? Well, yeah, let, let's do that. Let's do that, and if I can figure things out and we can figure out how to do science properly around Duna, I'll just send another mission. Let's do some atmospheric experiments with Duna, and that's what uh, I'll try and do right now. So, continuing. So this has turned to atmospheric experimentation. And when I say Duna, I meant Mars. Of course, Duna would not be a problem. I know the air braking altitude on Duna. Mars. And whether or not this would be enough delta V to slow us down enough to get into orbit around Mars. That's another thing I want to know. Fifty-five, maybe we can tweak that with, uh, yeah, with RCS. Forty-seven. Seems like we could, uh, let's go to forty-five, yeah. And let's get retrograde. Okay, uh, first of all, I also wanted to check whether, yeah, we don't have the weird weird uh, cloud situation I had on the Nova C8 installation so that's something else I need to think about why don't why do we have that over there but don't have it over here I'll have to look at the configuration files to see what the difference is I'm retracting the solar panels still got our CS on for stab stabilization we are obviously on the dark side here. Let's see about heat. The engine itself being an obvious point of reference. Temperature negative 40 degrees Celsius and going down. Thrust limiter. Yeah, I, I guess I did want, want to limit the thrust on this. Did I? Hmm, I wonder what that was all about. Did I just misclick something or did I intend for that? Okay, no. It's possible I intend for that because there's no need to have too much thrust for such a small probe. Okay, we're approaching the, the periapsis. We are slowing down. We are at 23 degrees Celsius. The engine might not be the hottest part right now. It's probably the RCS ports. Yeah, look at that. 340, 350. The RCS ports are always a problem. Kind of 
current acceleration on this seems to only take into consideration the acceleration due to the engine and not due to everything else so that's a little bit annoying obviously we are being decelerated by the atmosphere going up now I don't think we're anywhere near where we need to be yeah we're still very decisively exiting so let me run the engine okay that's orbit let's see how much the atmosphere can do versus what we might need to do further very inclined orbit not bad if we wanted to scan the surface for information this would actually be close to ideal not quite getting the pole but not bad at all we certainly want to get uh, within BOP or I forget which one uh, Phobos or Deimos is the closer one to Mars it would be Phobos I think but uh, yeah we definitely want to get within that orbit not that it's likely to perturb us much gravitationally but just in case still going very well very well indeed so we've got something done in terms of Mars we figured out a good altitude to air break at we didn't really have to burn that much in order to secure the orbit and uh, the heat wasn't a problem at this altitude it's possible that uh, sending a manned mission on a faster trajectory would uh, of course it would then be coming in faster and that would be a bit more of a problem we wouldn't necessarily want man missions to have a 300 day transit time okay it looks like uh, the orbit is more or less stabilizing so I'm going to bring it down via my own power here So, uh, apparently we have a rogue semi-sentient orbiter around Mars. Somehow the computer systems on this probe have become semi-intelligent and able to... I don't know, whatever story you want to cook up. Uh... Okay, I think that's tight enough for me. Uh, two, 2,000 kilometers or so. I'm going to then boost this end up. Just so that we're in a stable orbit here. I'm not going to overdo it though. That'll be... F well, that's, that's probably overdoing it actually. think uh, 600 would be fine that's fine not the way I wanted my first probe to get around Mars on the other hand uh, the information we got is invaluable so and we did not gain any illicit science points. Interesting that we are still at, we are still limited to physical time warp at a height that we wouldn't be around Earth. Still, still physical here about 200 
Nope. I have no idea why that should be, but... Okay, now we're good. Maybe it's just for safety so that we don't time warp right through things. Entirely possible. Okay, here we go. Should have attached a keythane detector on this just to get that part done. Missed that trick. Of course, to do that we would have to get within 250 kilometers on either side. But that wouldn't have been a problem. But we'll have to save that for a different trip. So yeah, very mixed episode this time. Lots, lots of stuff talked about, lots to comment on. So uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you do have any of those comments on any of all sorts of different topics, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.